welcome back to another episode of What's Up Prof. Hello, Walter. Good day, young man. Are you well? I'm fine. Ah, that's good. Interesting topics. Well, the world is moving in a direction and nobody wants to admit that it's moving in a direction. Yeah, and that second word in the title, conspiracy. Everything is being deemed a conspiracy, even the Bible. Everything is now a conspiracy. Let's open with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we need you again, please. We need your enlightenment that we can discuss these things according to your will and we ask that you bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There are some people who are taking note that there are certain changes in the world which are strange, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. Now, we don't want to get into a heavy discussion on any of these issues, but we do want to set the record straight as to what we believe about this book. Correct. And I'm not going to be apologetic about the fact that I believe what this book says. I didn't always believe what the book said, but uh, having tested it, and come to the conclusion that it is definitely not a man-made mm. document because that is impossible. There are too many nuances. Yes. And if you take the period that it was written, it's just impossible that the flow that's in there, that it could be... And the chiasms mm. and uh, the parallelisms and uh, the merisms and you name it. And the the consistency of the message throughout, it's just amazing. And every time you read it, you're reading a new book. And That's uh, true. I've read many books in my life, and some I've read more than once, because particularly in your academic career, you have mm. to refresh yourself. But uh, when you read this book over and over again, you're reading a new book every single time. Mm, true. And uh, there was a a court case once where they took a man's Bible to see what his thinking patterns were and they looked at all the places that he'd underlined to see what his thinking patterns yeah. were. And I thought about that for a while. You know, every time you read this book, you find something else to underline. <laughs> so if they wait long enough, <laughs> everything's <laughs> underlined. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> yes. So let's jump right into it. And uh, we don't want to be tedious, but let's see where we can go. Sky News had <laughs> an interesting little discussion the other day about uh, what people consider conspiracies these days. And uh, the, the news commentator was quite irate about these things and he said many things which we would actually also say, right? Yes, correct. <laughs> now, we do not do not want to play the whole thing. We'll put the link in there and people can watch it for themselves. But just the introduction is interesting. So let us see where we are going. Well, I have frequently spoken about the Great Reset. This is the plan by the World Economic Forum to encourage governments to use all the levers they use during lockdown, enforced business closures, 23-hour lockdowns, restricting how far you can go from your home, and ridiculously aggressive policing tactics in order to tackle climate change. So Martin, he has quite a long discussion about everything that people claim to be conspiracy theories mm -hmm. and he's stating, how can it be a conspiracy if you're quoting these people directly, right? That's a question we also ask. That's a question we also ask and, uh, you know, we get it from, from all sides, from the theological side, mm -hmm. from the secular side. Just read the news. <laughs> <laughs> then you wouldn't have to complain about all of these things. Yeah, and you wouldn't have to uh, flag us as conspiracy theorists the whole time. Yes, so let's uh, leave it at that, not play anything more, but uh, it's quite fun watching what the man has to say. So, yeah. <laughs> he was also uh, accused of being a conspiracy theorist. And For they, quoting the news. And they even linked him to QAnon as well. So, <laughs> Well, he's in good company. Good company. 
Let's have a look at what's happening in the world because uh, there is a distinct denial that we are heading in a particular direction in this world. And the fact that that direction is clearly portrayed in the Bible seems to be irritating some forces out yes. there, right? Yes. And uh, the closer that connection becomes, the more irritated some people are becoming. And the louder they will scream mm -hmm. and say that this is an apocalypse conspiracy. Well, let's have a look at a few news items just to get us into the mood. The Vatican, of course, is making a big issue of the fact that the Pope is finally going to Iraq yes. for the first time ever. So Iraqi Cardinal Louis Sacco, Patriarch of Babylon of the Chaldeans, told Vatican Radio Stefano, I don't think I'll pronounce that one, that as the entire population prepares to welcome Pope Francis, something has already changed in the nation. That's interesting. Yeah. Just the mere fact that he visits a place changes a nation. Some of the photos and so on I saw that they've got posters up and they really they're geared, geared for this. For this. Mm. Christians and Muslims alike, said Cardinal Sacco, are busy preparing posters of greetings and all media outlets are saying, welcome Pope Francis, we are happy to welcome you. This is what we've been talking about, that the whole world, mm -hmm. even those that are supposedly so anti-Christianity, yes. are wandering after the beast. And it's interesting to me, I listened to the clip of what Pope Francis himself had to say. And he was saying this is absolutely necessary for the common good. common good. Now, the Bible talks about come out and be separate. You're supposed to preach a gospel of salvation to the entire world. But this common good seems to negate that, right? We have to all yes. work together in a syncretistic system, uh, accepting that everyone is at exactly the same level, which absolutely negates the proclamation of the gospel. So it's interesting that uh, these moves are afoot and that the Pope is carrying on yeah. with his mission. To me it was also interesting that he was speaking about spiritual fraternity. Yes, spiritual fraternity. Uh, what does that mean? It means that we're all brothers and sisters on the same level, right? Yes. Uh, our last hope is another interesting point. Our last hope. He underscored how one of the focuses of the journey will be on fraternity, a spiritual fraternity, which is said will be especially highlighted when the Holy Father travels to Ur, the birthplace of Abraham. Also in the forefront, Cardinal Sacco continued, is the interreligious aspect of the journey that foresees, amongst others, a meeting with the Ayatollah. It will have a big impact for Christians and Muslims. Mm. So they're linking, as they have done for many years now, back to Abraham as the father of the monotheistic religions in the world. Yes. Do you remember in one of our first WhatsApp profs, we showed this link where the, uh, they have a, a church and a synagogue and a, a mosque that's going to be built in Saudi Arabia. Now, this uh, is in the, in the same be a line. thing, yes. Yeah. Yes, it's like... Uh, Chris Lam, except, of course, they have to expand that word to include the Jewish religion as well. All right, that was just to keep us up to date with where we're going in the world. And uh, the interesting fact is that people say, this is the last hope. For what? For mm -hmm. peace, right? Correct. And the Bible says when they say peace, peace and mm -hmm. safety then that will signal that the end has come. Now, here's another video that we want to show. 
where there is an attempt to drag the way in which the Trump supporters uh, think and how they act into this conspiracy theory idea. It seems to me that there is a very concerted effort to try and marginalize any form of thinking that to the collective world is a danger. Any form of separatism, yeah. any form of going back to the old ways other than this great reset, mm -hmm. this new mode of thinking, this re-education has to be marginalized. And the best way to do this is through ridicule. Yep. Isn't that interesting? If you go to the Bible, what was Peter's downfall? He was ready to go to war. Yes. He was ready to pick up the sword. Mm. He was ready to slash heads, but he only got an ear. <laughs> <laughs> but his downfall was ridicule. Mm. That is the bane of any fringe society. And eventually people will capitulate to ridicule. John, the well under the ridicule that's why he uh, could stand yes when he went into the room but peter peter f peter fell what were your thoughts on the violent insurrection incited by trump at the capitol oh my god that's all such a lie that was all the left we have all the proof there's tons of proof <laughs> january 6th was a plan that was pre-planned by the Democrats. I knew that it was pre-organized by Antifa. What did you think of what happened on the 6th? On the 6th? 6th of January, the violent insurrection. What did you oh, think of that, that? That's what you guys call it, the insurrection? What would you call it? Well, I call it a movement by the communists to make it look like Trumpers did it. That's what I call it. So many Trump supporters arrested at it. Well, that's what you guys say. I don't believe that. You prove it to me. I mean, there's all the indictments. I mean, whatever the, you guys say, I don't believe any of it. Right. To tell you the truth. These Trump supporters are in denial about what happened on January 6th, and some believe in QAnon. What's going to happen at some point is there'll be arrests, and that'll include a lot of the line media, and then there'll be military but tribunals. But has it happened? They keep saying that for well, years, it, and no, it's not it hasn't happened. been years. It hasn't it's, been it's years. It's been since 2017. It's been years Believe now. Me, we're taking it. This is a 6,000-year-old death cult. Right. You can't take it down that quick. I understand you're a very passionate Trump supporter, right? But yes. you, you surely, you surely can admit that the people who stormed the Capitol were Trump supporters. No, I definitely cannot. In fact, you're talking to the right person because I can t send you tons of footage that shows that that was all the left dressed up, the anti for the BLM dressed up as Trump supporters. Come on. It is my hope that uh, President Trump comes back. Um, as the 19th president of the United States under the uh, 1776 and um, that he is inaugurated on March 4th. That is my hope for our future. Some have bought into a new conspiracy theory that Trump will return as the 19th president on March 4th. Why? Well, they have misinterpreted an 1871 law and believe Ulysses S. Grant, who was inaugurated on March 4th, 1869, was America's last legitimate president. It may all sound bizarre, but online discussion about March 4th has been a contributing factor in the decision to keep the National Guard in Washington, D.C. Are you going to feel foolish on March 5th when Biden's still president? Um, then Trump has a different plan in play. Everybody keeps saying Trump has a plan, he has a plan. When he lost the election, they said hey, he has a plan. He's oh, still going to say that. Trump didn't lose the election, sir. But he did. Trump did not lose the election, and that's where we we differ. Right. And that's where I believe the information that Mike Lindell has put out. The pillow guy. Of all of the abuse, corruption, stealing. So do you, you trust the man. You trust the man more who sells pillows than the Republican officials in Georgia. Oh, absolutely. But do you realize that sounds the, the, Let me crazy. just tell you that the people in Georgia are sick. And while most of the world looks on in horror at a deadly military coup in Myanmar, that's exactly what these Trump supporters hope to see happen here 
in the United States of America. This whole thing with Biden is just, he's like a puppet president. Uh, the military is in charge. It's going to be like Myanmar, what's happening in Myanmar. The military is doing their own investigation. And at the right time, they're going to be restoring the republic with Trump as president. What's going in on different in Myanmar right now? The what? government took over and they're redoing the election. Would you like to see it happen? Absolutely. I would like to see it really? happen. Really? Yes. You know why? Because the election was stolen from us. I never would have believed CNN would have given me a chance to speak the truth. No. What a no. miracle. Praise God. I mean, but we're going to say in our news report that QAnon is a conspiracy theory. You don't believe QAnon is a conspiracy theory. Oh, I know it isn't. I know it isn't. I'm not much for believing. I have to know. Well, Martin, what do you think CNN has in mind mm -hmm. by making a program like this? To discredit them. To discredit them. Now, please don't <laughs> misunderstand. We're yes. not giving them any credit here yeah. either. This is not the issue. This is a game. Yes. And they have a lot of experience in playing this game. If you continue with the narrative over and over mm -hmm. and over again, eventually people will be channeled into exactly. a direction of thinking. Now, the 4th of March has come and has gone. Mm -hmm. So, as this lady there said, well, then there must be another plan, right? Yes. And these plans will just continue. So, in a sense, both sides are at loggerheads about something that they do not fully comprehend. Mm -hmm. What is the real agenda behind this type of yes. hype that they are creating? To discredit a line of thinking. Because what did they do with the Millerite movement? Exactly the same thing. They put it to discredit that whole thing. They linked it to QAnon. And now they just kept continuing to discredit all of this. And as that lady said, you can't dismantle a 6,000-year <laughs> issue just like that. So what is interesting to me, Martin, is that there are elements of truth. Yes. And this is what makes it so interesting. The element of truth is there is a decline in morality in the world. Definitely. Nobody can deny that. There is a movement towards creating some form of new program out of chaos. That's been a Masonic plan all along. Ordo ab chaos. Mm -hmm. If you have enough chaos you have an opportunity to create a new order of things, yeah. a great reset. Correct. Totally new mindset. And this new mindset will bring about that beautiful word fraternity. Yes. Common, Common good. Common good. And then finally all of these fringes will have been removed from society and we can get on with the business. Mm. But that's exactly where the danger lies. Because if you allow for all the injustices that are taking place in the world, if you allow for the degradation of society in the way in which it is going, you are at the same time on a collision course, on a collision course yes. with this book. Because then you're going to try and discredit what that book says. Exactly. So we're not taking sides in this no. issue. We're just observing the gameplay. Exactly. This is what's going on. And don't get caught up with it. Don't hook yourself to something that is actually relevant. So you cannot swallow the whole system because there are a few points within the system that are relevant. Yes. You have to ask yourself the question, where is this leading to? Mm -hmm. So while we were talking about the points of morality, mm -hmm. there's no denying that the world has become a very strange place, right? Correct. Yeah. In the old days, when a child was born, you immediately knew 
what gender it <laughs> it was. It wasn't yes. it wasn't rocket science to determine the gender, correct? And once you had determined the gender, which took a few seconds, then you could decide whether the room was going to be pink or blue. That's yeah. the way it was. And what kind of toys there would be in the room? Would it be prams and dolls and, and things like that? Or would it be cranes and cars and things like that? Yeah. But that's all changed, right? So here is a new law. California law would fine department stores $1,000 for separating toys by gender. Stores would not have to change their products, that, but the products could not be displayed based on how they have traditionally been marketed for either girls or boys. Hasbro, the company that made the potato-shaped plastic toy for nearly 70 years, announced this week it is giving the Mr. Potato Head a gender-neutral name. It's just going to be Potato Head. Mr. is going to be gone. Uh, the change will appear on boxes this year. Now, no offense, Martin, but the potato looks very masculine. It's totally bald, for one. <laughs> 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 but of course, uh, you can change that. You can put a little yeah. wig on the potato. No, I wonder, th th in, in, there was a movie called Toy Story. Yes. And then there was a Mr. Potato Head, but there was also a Mrs. Potato Head, so they probably have want to change her name then as well. Yes, you can't remove the Mr. without removing the Mr. Mrs. Mrs. That would be discrimination, Dis wouldn't mm -hmm. it? Correct. And, and if you think how far this goes, yeah. that you now have a choice as to which washroom you want to use. And uh, I mean, these things are ridiculous. Joe Biden made it quite plain that you should be able to decide which washroom you want to go in. In the old days, you would be get clobbered, right? Yeah. But that's all changed. So is there a shift in morality? The, definitely. Where do we get the standard for morality? The standard of, for morality is actually recorded in this book. And this is going against what that book says. But there are people that say this is a patriarchal system. Yeah. Right? So do you want to go back to an old-fashioned patriarchal system? Now, did women not have a prominent role in this Bible? Weren't there prophetesses? Yes. All right. Yeah. Wasn't Deborah a judge for Israel? So she was a, a leader, a Correct. very prominent... But that person. doesn't change the fact that God has put a order in yes. place. It was not an order of subjection. No. Because Eve came out of Adam's side. Mm -hmm. She didn't come from underfoot. She came from Adam's side. And the two shall be one. So... You know, the Bible is actually very balanced, but obviously not balanced enough for some people. Here's an interesting article. Now, we're not taking a stand here on uh, how we think about this morality. We're just stating what is happening in the world. Here's an interesting article, and it has a very interesting title, Gay Polyamorous Thrupple with children say it's no big deal that their kids have three dads. In a new book, Three Dads and a Baby, set to be released next week, one of the fathers, Dr. Ian Jenkins, details the reproductive journey he and his partners embarked upon in order to become father to their daughter, Piper, who is now three years old. The Thrupple now also have a one-year-old son named Parker. Piper, who is now in preschool, is alleged to have proudly told the classmate, you have two parents, I have three parents. We're not discussing the morality of this issue, but surely times have changed. Definitely. This would not have been even remotely possible a decade ago or two decades ago at most. So things are changing. All right, so now we've seen that there is this, this plan to put people into conspiratorial categories, mm -hmm. 
to streamline a way of thinking forward, to incorporate new ways of thinking about morality. And then there are ways in which these things can be enforced, yes. how your movements can be enforced. And the, the COVID crisis was very useful for this. So here's an article about Europe in Breitbart. Everyone agreed on vaccine passports, says Merkel at a EU summit. Now, it's not only the, the mm. European Union. Israel has introduced it. There's talk in many of the countries in Africa to introduce yes. it. This passport is on the agenda. Merkel said that such a system could be implemented as soon as the summer. So there's a great rush to yes. get the system in place. European Commission President Ursula von Leyen praised Israel's implementation of the Green Passes, a system in which the government tracks and documents an individual's vaccination history in order to facilitate travel or to attend synagogues, theaters, concerts, or to go to the gym. Now, in our own country, there was a promise that it wouldn't happen. Yeah, they wouldn't be forced. You wouldn't be forced. But there are ways and means of doing this without the government actually enforcing it, as in the case of yeah, Israel. The, the counter for enforcement is restriction. Correct. Education Secretary Gavin Williamson backed up the plan to carry passports to go to restaurants, cinemas, theaters, telling LBC Radio on Wednesday, I think I would probably do pretty much sort of anything to be able to enjoy all those lovely things. So here is a form of coercion. And it's interesting to me there are so many media reports, we're not going to talk about them, about the efficacy of all of these rules and regulations that have been implemented mm. and how the negative side of them, the downside, is being downplayed yes. and the upside is being made prominent. It, it's actually interesting. If you talk against any of these things, you're silenced. Absolutely, you're not allowed to talk about things. And there are statistics coming out, which we will not discuss at the moment, which show the negative effects and even death rates. But uh, we won't go there because we want to stay on <laughs> our platforms for a while. But people should have a look and see what is happening in the world. And is this really something that is necessary? There's even talk of, of major court cases mm. against governments and all of these things. Now, the Vatican is always in the mix. Always. Always in the mix. And this is the point we're trying to get across, right? Always in the mix. And the Bible tells us yes. he's going to be in the mix. The whole time. Now, is that a conspiracy? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you see the whole Bible as a conspiracy, it's you just, can't say it. It's just a fact. It's, a it's fact. like that first little video clip. That man just put it as it was, right? No jab, no job. Vatican gets tough with COVID anti-vaxxers. The Vatican has told employees that they may risk losing their jobs if they refuse to get a COVID-19 vaccination without legitimate health reasons. A decree by Cardinal Giuseppe Bertello, effectively the governor of Vatican City, said getting a vaccine was the responsible choice because of the risk of harming other people. I read an interesting article about uh, the collective the other day. And it talked about the collective being non-existent if it weren't for the individual. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. So, you know, where is the basis? Is it the individual or is it the collective? Of course, with the Vatican, it's the collective mm -hmm. and not the individual. But with the Bible, it's the individual. Exactly. Because there has to be an individual choice. So has the collective the right to force the individual? Mm. That is a very good question. 
especially when conscience is involved. And, uh, you know, history has proved that the majority is always right, right? Uh, no. No? Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay, that's not so the don't case. quote me on that. No. <laughs> <laughs> the Vatican has made a COVID 19 vaccination obligatory for journalists accompanying Pope Francis on his trip to Iraq next month. Uh, interesting that even the vaccine companies themselves say that the vaccination doesn't guarantee that you will not be able to transmit mm -hmm. the virus. But be that as it may, uh, the interesting part here is the Vatican leads by example. Yes. And the nations are singing the same tune. They're all on middle C when it comes to this issue. Now, of course, they have to ensure that people conform to these new directives, Correct. right? So, enter the spy networks. Mm -hmm. A recent report estimates about a billion security cameras rolling worldwide, 18% of them here in the United States. The U.S. is second only to China when it comes to keeping eyes on its citizens. Make no mistake, Big Brother is watching. According to safety.com, the average American is caught on camera 238 times each week. Wow. <laughs> Here's how those 238 camera views rack up. Cameras capture you at home or in your neighborhood 14 times a week, 160 times behind the wheel. While you're working, candid cameras catch you 40 times, maybe more if you're in retail, travel, or high security industries, and 24 times a week while shopping or running errands. Right now we have about 15 cameras for every 100 people in America, about 50 million cameras. Um, and that's more per capita than any other country in the world, even China. I mean, the basic concern is that we're gonna lose our privacy and we're gonna become a country that's different from what we've always been. That from the moment you step out of your front door until you return home at night, every moment of your life in public will be recorded, um, potentially scrutinized, watched, he says it's often artificial intelligence keeping track, not humans. Computers that analyze your daily routines and that understand what you're doing, what you're carrying, what you're wearing, who you are, what your attributes are, and filing that away somewhere. You don't expect privacy on the street corner. So if a camera captures what you're doing in the street corner, I don't think that's an intrusion on privacy. UCLA law professor Eugene Volokh believes the positives outweigh the negatives. Both experts agree the biggest concern is the potential for government tracking its citizens under the guise of crime prevention. We're seeing some cities like Chicago putting police cameras all over the city and networking them together. They're also tying in private cameras. Um, in some cases, the ring cameras are being networked together by Amazon, which takes all the camera feeds and puts them in the cloud, um, potentially making them available to the authorities. Part of the solution, experts say, is private citizens asking themselves several questions before installing cameras on personal property. Do you trust the manufacturer who may store images on their own servers? Do you trust the internet? because any cameras tied to the web are susceptible to being hacked. And do you trust the government that in many cases can use a warrant to access what your camera captures? Now the point of all of this, Martin, is uh, not to reiterate a well-known story over and over, mm -hmm. but just to say that the Bible says that rich or poor, it doesn't matter. Yep you will not be able to partake in certain activities, buying and selling in particular mentioned in the Bible. Mm -hmm. In other words, you won't be able to go to the theater, you won't be able to go to the shop, you won't be able to do that yes. if you do not conform to the system. Do they have the mechanism in place yes. to enforce it? Yes. And maybe it's also important to reiterate that eventually... What we've been talking about the Sunday, the Sunday legislation and all of this that will be coming in, will not be something new. It's not going to be, this is, it's just going to be a next step. Correct. This is already being implemented on these levels. So when that happens, 
It's just the next step. So people won't be so alerted to see, oh, now it's here. Correct. So the question is, do we see this trend, the decline in morality, the surveillance systems, the new way of thinking, thinking yeah. the channeling into a system of fraternity, common good requiring certain measures to be taken to save the planet from climate change calamities, mm -hmm. Sunday legislation being very much part of the issue. Do we see this trend, yes or no? Definitely, yes. Now, how many times have we been asked, what's your big deal with the Sunday issue? There you go again with the Sunday issue. This is not important to many people. Mm. What difference does it make what day you keep? Why do you keep hammering mm -hmm. the Sunday issue? Perhaps we should just spend a moment just to clarify this issue. Yes. Is it a question of a day or does it have a much deeper significance? Now, Sunday legislation has been part of humanity for a very, very long time. Yes. And we will be seeing just now mm -hmm. that they are celebrating or that they celebrated the 1,700 years of Sunday legislation. It's been there for a long time. But the Bible clearly indicates that in the end there will be a universal decree implementing the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Now this question of a mark, is a very important thing. And when Rome declares out of its own volition that Sunday is the mark of her authority and that the change of the day from the Saturday to the Sunday is proof of the fact that they have this authority, authority yes. then that word authority is the principal word, mm -hmm. not the day. No. When the authority is the proof that they can change the day, then what is of more importance, oh. the day or the authority? The authority. The authority. Okay. So let's go back in history and just talk about this for a while. If you go to Genesis chapter 2, we've done this so many times, but I will just read quickly from Genesis chapter 2 here where it says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished. That's a very important word. Done deal. And all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Right there in Genesis. Mm -hmm. So this applies to how much of humanity? All, all of it. All of it, mm -hmm. right? Because there was only an Adam and Eve. Yes. And by one blood God has created all the nations. So this Sabbath was for whom? For man. For, for, for man. man. It was for everyone. It was for everyone. And it is the symbol of his creation. Mm -hmm. If you go to Exodus chapter 20 and you look at the Ten Commandments, two of the commandments are exceedingly long. They're on the first tab tablet. Yes. There it says quite clearly that you may not make for yourself an image. Idolatry is explained in great detail. That commandment has been removed. Now, we had a question the other day, which we haven't answered yet, where some people say, but they've looked in the Catholic Bible and it isn't changed there. Correct, yes. No, they, they didn't change it in the Bible. The Bible, no. But they changed it in their catechism. Yes. And where's their authority? Correct. There in the catechism. It lies in the catechism. Because that is their creed. Yes. And you have to abide by the creed and they have a whole council the congregation for doctrine and faith which enforces the decrees of the catechism the catechism stands 
above Scripture yes. alone. So the second commandment was removed. And the fourth commandment, which is also a long commandment, explaining what the Sabbath is all about, and that you must cease from your work. In other words, you are not to work for your relationship with God. You're supposed to enjoy your relationship with yeah. God. And you're supposed to remind yourself where you come from. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Mm. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day yes. is the Sabbath. And then it tells you what you're not supposed to do. And then it says quite clearly, for in six days, referring back to Genesis, God made the heavens, the earth, the sea, the springs of water. In other words, everything. And he rested on the seventh day and he declared it holy and mm -hmm. set it aside, right? So there you have the seal of God. You have the seal of his authority. He's the creator God. He's the one who made. Therefore, he has the right to say which day has been set aside. Correct. And that is his seal of authority. Now, what does Rome say is the seal of her authority? Changing that day. Okay, so we're not talking about the day. The day is incidental. Yes, but we're talking about the authority. Exactly. So when you touch the authority of God and you negate the authority of God, then you are attacking mm. the authority of your Creator. If you go to Deuteronomy chapter 5, where the law is again written with the finger of God, on new tablets because Moses broke the first one, which was symbolic of yeah. a broken law. Yes. Because they had broken the law, right? And he threw down the tablets and they broke. He didn't sin. No. It was symbolic of the breaking of the law. And the wording on the new tablets is slightly different. Mm -hmm. It says, remember that you were slaves in Egypt and the Lord took you out of there with a mighty hand. Therefore, you must keep the Sabbath. So the Sabbath has become not only a sign of creation, it has become a sign of redemption. redemption yes. How many redeemers are there? Only one. Isn't there supposed to be a fraternity and everybody has the same way to heaven? Or is the Bible quite clear that there's only one name yes. under heaven and earth whereby you can be saved? And didn't that one that it refers to say that he is Lord of the Sabbath? Correct. And so... Who has the authority to proclaim the day set aside to rest in the completed works of God? Who has that authority? Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Who claims that authority on earth? The Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church. So this is a clash of authority. Yes. If you have fraternity, then that verse that by only the name of Jesus you can be saved, it's gone. has to get out. Has so to be cannot, removed. What did that French minister have to say about the law of God? Mm, it must be subject to the law of the must country. Be, isn't that exactly the same thing? Mm -hmm. Who are you attacking? God. The authority of yes. God. Now, which law in the Ten Commandments gives validity and force to the entire Ten Commandments? The Fourth Commandment. Only the fourth yes, commandment. Only because any other leader, God, anything could write the other nine commandments. Right. So the authority for the entire law of God rests in the fourth commandment. The one who is speaking is the creator. Yes. I made. What did he make? Heaven and earth and everything in it. Therefore, I told you. I commanded you, I reminded you to keep the fourth commandment. Now, when humanity has attacked the commandment in the past, there's been much turmoil and a lot of blood. Mm -hmm. If you take the Valdenses, how many of them died? 
the Albigenses, the Celts, you name it, the Church of the East, the Ethiopian Church, how much blood flowed over the Sabbath Sunday issue. But it was always just a portion of the world. Yes. Right? Now, Martin, when the whole world decides to negate God's command mm. and get rid of it, then the whole world will stand as one denying God his authority. Correct. And giving that authority to someone else yes. who claims to have changed the day of worship to prove his authority. It's a clash of authorities. Yes. So is it a big deal? Definitely. And why is it that it's being kept for the very last moment? Why hasn't this thing been done before? Well, it has been done. There have been laws in Europe. Mm -hmm. There have been laws in the United States, very strict Sunday laws. Yes. There were laws in our own country. When I was a young oh, yes. person living in this country, there were very strict I Sunday laws. even there when I was uh, young. The, my wife's grandmother would forbid needlework on that day because she said that needle will stab God in the eye. <laughs> You're not allowed to do anything on a Sunday. And they're bringing this issue back. So now, because it's happening on a universal scale, universally, the world is saying we do not accept the authority of God. It is the final step in a great apostasy. There are so many laws coming down the pike mm -hmm. where people are saying, what is going on with the world? That video yeah. about the morality and the, and the Trump followers, they're saying, what's happening to the world? Correct. Why has God not yet intervened? Because there has not been a universal setting aside of his authority. authority. Correct. How would you do that? If you, in one foul swoop, wanted to attack God's authority mm -hmm. and remove it from society, what law would you make? That you don't keep the law, the day, or the, uh, that acknowledges him as the true God and creator. So you would make a Sunday law? Yes. That's the last step. That's it. That's the last step. Be and when you've done that... Yeah, because if you, uh, if you say, okay, you want to negate the no, don't steal law, but that's a law of the country. Of <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. But you make a Sunday law, you are negating the authority of God. And that is why it is a big deal. And that is why I, for one, had to change my view, not only from an atheist to a believer, but also to acknowledge where I come from and who saved me. And the only way I can do that is by keeping the law as it is written by God and not changed by man. Yes. And for those that have a problem with us speaking on the issue of the Sunday, you'll have to buckle up because it's not going to end here. It's not going to end. It's going to come again and again. It's like talking about the papacy. We're not going to stop talking about it no. because it's the lead horse. Finished. That is what we are supposed to be looking at because people are wandering after this. Exactly. Beast. Here's an article from Newsday about what's happening in Trinidad and Tobago. Now you might say, well, that's a corner of the world. But if this is an issue that is happening universally, then it becomes a different story, right? Mm -hmm. But let's look here. Let's keep Sunday sacred. Sunday is the soul of the nation. It is more than just a fanatical religious preoccupation. There is a reason why the day was woven into the fabric of our society. We have to save Sunday. Historically, the practice of reserving a day for rest was the best thing for a fledgling nation. It was biblical in intent and economical in its effect. It offered intangible rewards such as resting from the labors of life and connecting with the divine. In past times, the law protected Sunday, 
limiting labor and the opening of bars and business, but we have since flipped in the importance of the day. The old ordinances have been left in the dusty corners of the library of laws. The common law as an astute reflection of the soul and intent of men in their moral duties has revealed where we are as a nation. Is it then not prudent, just and fair that we should preserve the sanctity of the day called Sunday? Let us be the remnant that holds this day to be sacrosanct to our society. Let us keep the sacredness of Sunday in its rightful place as central to the resolution of problems in our nation. We have to preserve the order of things or the disorder will destroy us. Let's save Sunday for our nation's sake. That's a very interesting speech. Yes. So the disorder will destroy us. We need a new order. Correct. We need order out of this chaos. And there's also, let us be the remnant that hold this day to sacrosanct to our society. Correct. The Bible also refers to a remnant that will be holding the full co the Ten Commandments just before the end. Correct. So let's listen to the speech by the Prime Minister of Barbados and listen carefully because it affects the entire world. People are making tremendous sacrifices for the sake of the national good. And as I've thanked so many others tonight, I want to thank the majority of you Barbadians who have literally risen to the call and have stayed put. And I've ensured that in many instances, you have also become part and parcel of our national compliance effort, ensuring that persons who you know are doing the wrong thing that you are telling us and you're telling them to. At the same time, my friends, I have also said to the, and responded to the Minister of Health, who has asked that we do not have commercial activity in supermarkets, hardware stores, or any stores on Sundays for now. And therefore, when these things open back up on the 1st of March, it will be business from Monday to Saturday, but there will be no commerce in the supermarkets on Sunday. We feel that the workers there and the persons who are monitoring, and I ask Bajans to think about the people who have to work as monitors, who have to work in enforcement, who have to work in the supermarkets, they're under pressure too. And let them have Sunday as the day of rest while we fight this out, and let us give Sunday as the time to be able to move forward. It's interesting that you even mentioned the surveillance there. And tell us about it when you see people mm -hmm. not conforming and tell them about it. So the nation must become involved. They must be on the same wavelength. And they must police each other. Yes. And Sunday must become a day of rest. For the collective common good. Correct. All right, so let's jump from Barbados to the European continent. And this is a law in Spain. Since when do you rest on Sundays? The Sunday Rest Act has been enforced for more than 100 years. Tomorrow, the f March the 4th, is the anniversary of a law that changed the labor paradigm in Spain. This is the Sunday Rest Law which introduced the prohibition of working on Sundays regardless of economic activity, something unthinkable previously. But since when has this law been enforced? The Sunday Rest Act was introduced in 1890. However, the law was not approved by any party, but this took place on December the 12th, 1903. That day, Congress approved the law that prohibits working on Sunday, but it was promulgated on March 3, published on the official State Gazette on March the 4th of the same month and entered into force on Sunday, September 11 of the year in question. Now, many of these laws, Martin, have been on the books. Mm -hmm. The blue laws in the United States. Yes. And in many countries, they are there. They are slumbering waiting to be enacted. Question, is there a move to activate them? Yes. Why would these articles be appearing in the newspapers all over the world? And one of the driving forces is climate change Absolutely. to awaken these laws again. Now we're jumping to the United States, right? 
Advancing from Oklahoma Senate panel, a bill by Senator Adam Pugh would allow car dealerships to sell vehicles on Sunday. The bill would allow dealerships to sell on Sundays. In reacting to that idea, candor requires me to confess some personal bias. In a former life, I once pastored a church, and I still wear the clerical collar, figuratively speaking. Candor further requires us all to note that the roots of Sunday laws, aka blue laws, go back to a time when the federal constitutional prohibition of religious establishment applied only to the federal government. That some states passed Sunday or blue laws for the avowed purpose of encouraging worship was in most quarters not even viewed as a problem. All of that said, there is ample secular justification for legally setting aside a day of rest. Secular justification? One of my grandfathers was a car salesman, and even though he was not a church-going man, he was thankful for a day when he could be with his family. Now, this argument has been the argument of the papacy all along. All along. We need a family day. We need a rest day. Uh, we'll see, but wasn't that also the same initiate idea of Constantine? Exactly. That's exactly what he did. So here, the Alliance for the Free Sunday, 3rd of March 2021, Free Sunday celebrates anniversary 1,700 years ago. On the 3rd of March, 321 AD, and they tell you about Constantine, that uh, promulgated a law and that they would like to retain that law. So this is a, a massive movement yeah. all over the world. Yes, and now this one, this Alliance for Sunday, had their big celebration on the 3rd. Correct. Now, you know, people always say, yeah, but what about the Muslim world? They keep Friday. Mm -hmm. No, they don't. They have a short period of worship on a Friday, but their stores are open on a Friday. When is the international day of rest for the banking system? Sunday. It's Sunday. So this is universal. It's already entrenched in every single nation in the world. It's just a small step mm -hmm. with the right initiative to finally bring about a universal decree that will undermine the authority of God. And persecution will be part of the final one. Absolutely, and surveillance by your brothers oh, yeah. and sisters. So when they recently had these celebrations in Europe, commemorating the 1,700 years, this is what was said by a spokesperson for the Alliance. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alix and I'm policy advisor at COMESE, which is the commission of the Bishops' Conference of the European Union. With the COVID-19 pandemic, many people are suffering from poverty and loneliness. This is why we need fraternity more than ever. We need to care for each other, for we are all members of one human family. This is why at COMESE we are committed to promote Sunday as a common weekly day of rest in the European Union. A day that gives time for family and spiritual life. A day uh, to experience social friendship and fraternity. Now the wording. Mm -hmm. All the buzzwords are there. Fraternity, common good, all of these issues. Now this organization is called Comesse. And it just echoes basically what the Vatican is saying. Correct. So again... You always have the lead figure pushing the agenda in the background. Well, here's another video. This one is in German, so perhaps we can go step by step and stop it occasionally and yes. see what it says. And you can explain to us what's being said. Yeah. 1,700 years of a free Sunday. Now... Bear with us as we look at a few points here. Schade. Endlich Sonntag. Familie Sonnemann sitzt entspannt beim Frühstück. At last a free Sunday. 
where we can sit as a family around the breakfast table and take time to enjoy it. Werktags arbeitet Frau Sonnemann als Verkäuferin in einem Warenhaus. Wenn sie am Samstagabend spät aus dem Geschäft kommt, liegen ihre Kinder schon im Bett. Aber am Sonntag hat sie endlich Zeit für ihre Familie. Herr Sonnemann ist Friseur. Oft steht er zehn Stunden am Tag in seinem Friseursalon, bis ihm abends die Füße wehtun. Am Sonntag aber kann er die Beine hochlegen. So Martin, what they're saying is that she works all day in that store, comes home late at night, the kids are in bed already, she has no time for the family. Mm. And the husband is a, is a hairdresser and he spends 10 hours standing a day, but on Sundays he can put up his feet and be with the family. So these are the arguments they are using for a free Sunday. So let's continue to watch. Gäbe es den Sonntag nicht, man müsste ihn erfinden. Wer hat den Sonntag denn erfunden? Also das ist eine längere Geschichte. So now he just said that if there were no Sunday, we would have to invent one. Because, you know, humanity needs it. So the little girl asks, where does it come from? And now he's going to give a history. And let's see what he says the history is. Biblisch gesehen beginnt alles mit der Schöpfung. Nachdem Gott an sechs Tagen die Welt erschaffen hat, vollendet er sein Werk mit einem Ruhetag. Genau wie Gott sollen auch die Menschen am siebten Tage ruhen. So it all began with the creation. And you see the seven days going by and on the seventh day God rested. Yes. But then of course things have to change because we have to move from the seventh day to the first day of the week. So mm -hmm. let's see how they justify it. Deshalb feiern die Juden bereits seit über 3000 Jahren am siebten Tag der Woche den Sabbat. Von Freitagabend bis Samstagabend herrscht Arbeitsruhe. So the Jews have kept the Sabbath according to the Bible for 3000 years and they kept the seventh day which is the Saturday as a Sabbath. Now let's see how it progresses. Im frühen Christentum entwickelt sich der Sonntag, der Tag der Auferstehung, zum wöchentlichen Feiertag. Arbeitsfrei ist er anfangs aber noch nicht. Zum allgemeinen Ruhetag wird der Sonntag erst unter dem römischen Kaiser Konstantin. So, under the Christian dispensation, the day developed into Sunday. But there was no law governing it. So that law came under the leadership of the Emperor Constantine. Am 3. März des Jahres 321, vor 1700 Jahren, verfügt Konstantin den ersten gesetzlichen Sonntagsschutz. Alle Richter, Stadtbewohner und Gewerbetreibenden sollen am verehrungswürdigen Tag der Sonne ruhen. So Constantine made a decree that there must be rest on the venerable day of the sun. They quite openly admit mm -hmm. that it was a day on which the heathen venerated the sun. sun. It's sun worship. Im Laufe des Mittelalters gibt es eine Fülle von Sonntagsregeln. Karl der Große gibt seinen Untertanen genaue Anweisungen, welche Arbeiten sonntags tabu sind. The Emperor Charles in the Middle Ages was the first then to expand this issue and to make very clear what was permissible and what was not permissible. So on Sundays it was not permitted to shear sheep. It was not permissible to make clothing or to do your washing or to do any sewing. And for men, you weren't allowed to build houses, you weren't allowed to fell trees, you weren't allowed to plow, and you weren't allowed to mow your fields. So there were very strict rules, which were different from what Constantine actually did, because he permitted farmers to continue their work. But here, the laws became stricter. In der Neuzeit ist der Sonntag hart umkämpft. Die französischen Revolutionäre wollen ihn am liebsten ganz abschaffen. Ihre zehn Tage Woche mit neun Werktagen und nur einem Ruhetag stößt allerdings auf wenig Begeisterung. So, in the newer times, the French Revolution tried to get rid of the, the work week entirely. They introduced a 10 day working week, but this did not uh, receive many accolades. 
In der frühen Industrialisierung muss das Proletariat an sieben Tagen die Woche schuften. Im Jahre 1839 verbietet der preußische König zumindest die Sonntagsarbeit von Kindern. Then in Germany, during the Industrial Revolution, uh, the machinery had to keep working. Mm. And so work became a common feature on Sunday, but at least they forbade the working for children. Okay. Ende des 19. Jahrhunderts stehen in Deutschland an Sonn- und Feiertagen die meisten Räder endlich wieder still. 1919 erhält der Sonntag erstmals sogar Verfassungsrang als Tag der Arbeitsruhe und der seelischen Erhebung. Then in 1919 finally Sunday came back onto the books and Article 139 it became a recognized day of rest. Und das gilt heute noch. Der Sonntag ist und bleibt frei. And this law applies to this day. So it's on the books. On the books. It's on the books. Das Bundesverfassungsgericht sieht im Schutz des Sonntags auch einen Schutz wichtiger Grundrechte und der Menschenwürde. Arbeit am Sonntag ist deshalb nur erlaubt, wenn sie für das Gemeinwohl nötig ist. So there are many reasons, amongst them human rights, why you should keep the law. And the only work that is permitted is work that is necessary for the common good. So okay. all of these laws are already there. Yeah aber nicht aus bloßem Profitinteresse. Und damit ist die Sache sonnenklar. Der Sonntag gehört uns und nicht der Wirtschaft. And with this, the issue is as clear as the sun. Sunday belongs to us and not to industry. Aber warum muss Mama dann sonntags manchmal arbeiten? Es gibt leider zu viele Ausnahmen, gerade im Einzelhandel. Why does mommy have to work sometimes on Sunday? There are too many exceptions that are permissible. So they're saying that must change. Es gibt aber auch die Allianz für den freien Sonntag aus Kirchen und Gewerkschaften. Außerdem engagieren sich das Handwerk, der Sport und die Kulturszene für den gemeinsamen freien Tag. That is why we have this organization which includes trade unions, the sporting bodies of the world that are fighting for the Sunday. Wir sollten alle etwas dafür tun, dass der Sonntag Sonntag bleibt. Prima, dann fangen wir am besten gleich damit an. We should all do something to ensure that Sunday remains a rest day. Wonderful, so let's start immediately. So we have a relaxing scene coming up. And we will see what is permissible on a Sunday. Now, that video was obviously also geared at the youth, right, Martin? Because mm -hmm. they had these little clay figures. Yeah. and uh, The whole family was there. The family. Asking questions. But the Alliance for the Free Sunday, celebrating the 1,700-year commemoration of the law of Constantine, wanted to make sure that people understand what the Sunday is about. So they also have a video on what is permissible to make it attractive, right? You have to change the mindset of the people. So let's look at that. What I find interesting in that one is 
there's no religion mentioned there. It's a small part. Tiny little part. If you compare the biblical Sabbath to the Sunday that they want, it's almost as if you can huh, on the Sunday. It's a very secular day. Yes. Sports, games. Did you see how excited they were in front of the television because of some sporting event, obviously? Mm -hmm. Now, this sport... We've dealt with it before, and I know this is a very <laughs> mute point with many people, but actual fact, that is part of the second commandment. Thou shalt not make for yourself an idol. It can, can become such an idol mm -hmm. that it consumes your entire life. And uh, I remember in my own life how fanatical I was about sport that I would destroy the television if, you t if my <laughs> team lost. I mean, I, I think back on those I days. was on the same page. We were yes. on the same page. <laughs> and now it's become, it's irrelevant. You know, it's a game. Who cares who wins because next year the other team's going to win anyway, right? Maybe you're lucky and they win two years in a row, but uh, yeah. well, it, yeah. it's part of idolatry. So the Sunday is not the same as the Sabbath. Exactly. You can't compare what you've just seen in that video for what you do. The Sabbath is set aside for, for a delight in, in God. God. Correct. And you can do many of these things. You can go for walks in nature. You can rest on the Sabbath. But it's time to spend with God and in His work and His work in nature and His yeah. work in the Word and contemplating and being with like-minded people who love to serve God. Instead of fitting God into that day, that day is about God. Very well put, Martin. Very well put. But let's bring it back to the religious side. Because behind this entire movement sits the one who claims to be the vicar of Christ. Mm. Here is the Vatican News from 4 March. EU bishops call for nations to protect work-free Sunday. That word over there, nations, mm. is that plural? Yes. That's <laughs> <laughs> Does it only include one or two countries? or? This is a universal mm. request. The Bishop of the European Union and the European Sunday Alliance, so they're working together, right? The one, the Sunday Alliance, is making it attractive even to the secular world. And now you have Big Brother standing behind it and saying, there's another reason. To protect synchronized free time, which most nations traditionally observe on Sunday. According to the network, which includes more than 100 national Sunday alliances, trade unions, employers, organizations, civil society, association, churches, religious communities and the European Union, a full day of rest per week is indispensable to recover. That might be so, Martin. Mm -hmm. But God set aside a very specific, specific day. day. And as they quite openly say here, they keep it by tradition. Yes. In vain they worship me teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. You have set aside God's law by your traditions. traditions. Indeed, they say, a common day of rest truly increases well-being and brings a positive effect on health. Only during a common day of rest is it possible to pursue volunteer work, civic engagement, joint social sports or faith-related activities, family time, more generally to spend time together, the statement explains. So they're reiterating what the alliance has mm -hmm. said. In particular, the European network calls on the European Commission to align its upcoming proposal for a directive on a right to disconnect with Article 2 of the Council of European Social Charter which already requires a weekly rest period, which shall, as far as possible, coincide with the day recognized by tradition or custom in the country or region concerned as a day of rest. Martin, 
The devil has been planning this for a very, very long time. Definitely. This is the end game. The Bible says so. And whether people like it or not, there's so much argument about the mark of the beast. Only the beast can define what its mark is. Yeah. And it's done that on many occasions. It is the mark of our ecclesiastical power that we change the day because it confirms our authority over and above the Bible. That is an affront to God. How do you oppose that? You can't. Yes, you can, Martin. Uh -huh. You can keep Saturday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're opposing it. You are saying, no, 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 hang on a second. That is sheer arrogance what you are saying. Your authority supersedes the Bible. I will show you that I believe that the Bible supersedes your authority and I will keep Saturday because God said so. 100%. You agree? Yes. Okay. So what we saw in the Vatican statement is basically confirmed here by the public statement of the European Sunday Alliance, which again gave this joint statement of the European Sunday Alliance on the occasion of the annual European Day for a Work-Free Sunday on March 3, 2021, 1,700 years Sunday protection, the value of synchronized free time in time of increasing digitalization. I find it interesting that free time has to do with digitalization. Computer mm -hmm. and all of these things are involved over here. So okay. again, they talk about the emperor. Bottom line is, is this becoming a major talking point? Definitely. Is the power that the Bible identifies, that power in Rome, behind a push for this legislation. Yes. 100%. It would. Because yeah. <laughs> it confirms its authority, right? Definitely. And when nations comply, aren't they lifting up the authority of this power over and above the Bible? Yes. So whose authority are they thereby attacking? God's authority. So this is what we're trying to say. It's not a question of a day. It's a question of whose authority do you regard as paramount? And the fact that it is coupled to a day is actually brilliant. Mm -hmm. Imagine, Martin, if it were coupled to a pilgrimage to a certain place and you're under COVID lockdown and you cannot go there. Yeah. You cannot go there. Many religious systems have compulsory pilgrimages to show that you are in line with their authority, right? Correct. So could God have made it a place that you have to nope. visit to show that you acknowledge his authority? No. Well, maybe yes, but that would cut out well, most of humanity. Exactly, that wouldn't work. But a day, it's going to come to you whether you like it or not, even if you're sitting in some jungle. Exactly, and how easy is it actually now for them to use all these ways of implementing restrictions and all of this to say we have to keep this one day one day the way they've been using the restrictions and the laws that they've written in around the pandemic just shows you that they geared to start implementing this when they've decided on it it's the writing is on the wall on March 3, the annual European Day for a Work-Free Sunday, the European Sunday Alliance calls on political leaders in Europe to put synchronized free time as a priority on the social policy agenda and help make a tangible, visible and cherished improvement in the lives of citizens across Europe. Now there's a word that stands out there, Martin. That's the word synchronized free time. Mm -hmm. which actually means that everybody must keep exactly the same free time. Yep. So you cannot stagger it. No. Nope. You cannot say, okay, you can have a day off on a yep. Wednesday. And you can, you have can have a day off on a Friday. And the Sabbath keepers can keep their Sabbath on a Saturday. On a Saturday. No, no, no. no free time is going to be synchronized universally. Mm -hmm. 
That means one day. Take it or leave it. So there is a definite movement in the world in a direction which is prophesied in this book. And it hinges on the authority of God. Mm -hmm. The world has removed the authority of God systematically. He's been taken out of the political arena for the sake of fraternity. The name of Jesus has been removed in many, many places, in public meetings. You're not mm -hmm. allowed to use that because it goes against fraternity. It's been a a progressive change. Laws of morality have changed. They've become freer. And now there is this massive movement towards synchronized free time. And Sunday is at the hub. And it is the logical day. Mm. It's already entrenched in so many countries, either in tradition or in blue laws or in this or in that. And we see a push. And there is a little group of people that is warning against what is happening in the world and saying, excuse me, we want to show you that this has been prophesied in the Bible and that this is a sign of the end. What would be a counter strategy for that? Let's have a look. Here's the express. End of the world prophecy. Bible warns of terrible times in the end days. Now Martin, they're not for this. They are against this, right? This is in the same light as the CNN report on the Trump supporters. Exactly. So it's ridiculing people that see Bible prophecy end times fulfilling before their eyes. End of the world prophecies about the end days and the second coming of Christ are shaping up around the world at least according to outrageous claims made by a Christian conspiracy theory blog. Niche groups of conspiracy theorists believe these signs are already unfolding and there's not much time left on the clock before the final judgment uh, do you fall into that category? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> yes. And although there is no credible evidence, scientific or religious, to back these claims, the blog authors are convinced recent sociopolitical turmoil is evidence of biblical prophecy coming to fruition. Now, Martin, there's prophecy and there's prophecy. And many of the prophets out there, we must still do one, on all of these prophets, right? Oh. They're saying many, many things. And many don't realize that what they've actually incorporated in their thinking is something that has been pre-digested in the stable of Rome. So the whole theory of futurism, mm -hmm. the whole theory of a literal Israel, which will again be in charge of the world under this thousand year period when the church will have been raptured. That's not biblical. That's not biblical at all. The Bible clearly tells us that in the tribulation everybody will be here. Yes. The plagues will be falling. And the type that you had in Egypt where the children of Israel were present mm -hmm. while the pl plagues fell is the type for the antitype. You're not going to violate the type and change the conditions in the anti-type. So none of these things are biblical. So there's so much confusion yes. out there. It's such an intermingling of ideas. But number one, anybody who says that Bible signs are fulfilling is a conspiracy Th theorist. That's what they're saying now. That's what they're saying. So who's all a conspiracy theorist? If you believe in... 1844 on the second coming of Christ and the judgment, like the Millerites believed, then you're a conspiracy theorist. 
if you believe like the QAnons believe, you're a conspiracy yeah. theorist. If you believe in the six-day literal creation, then you are a conspiracy mm -hmm. theorist. Now, if you believe in the end times, <laughs> yeah. Now, if you well, it comes to if you actually believe what the Bible what the says. Bible says, if you use that book, you're a conspiracy theorist. So I'm afraid that label's going to stick. Excellent. So perhaps we should be proud of that label. Yes. Eh? End of the world prophecy. These, those signs include the rise of Iran, Turkey, China. Now they're giving all of these signs, the Great Reset, Agenda 21. They're throwing in everything in there. The Antichrist will falsely declare himself the true Messiah in an act described by experts as the greatest deceit in history. Uh, there's truth mingled with, with error, error here. Because the Bible also says that even, even the elite will be, deceived. will be deceived. And Satan will masquerade as an angel, angel of, light. of light. He will come. But before that, there will be a false Messiah. So uh, that It's such an intermingling of truth and error that I can understand why people get confused out there. And there are so many prophets out there shouting that this will happen and that will happen and none of it happens. Correct. Why? Because they are mixing yes. the truth in this word with the conjectures and philosophies that have been introduced into the Christian world by the beast itself. And that, Futurism, preterism, all of that stuff. And that's why we'll do an episode on these prophets and what yes, they are saying. I think we should. So they're, they're talking here about the authors of uh, the signposts of the times claim there's another sign of prophecy that is presently unfolding and that is the breakdown of morality, individualism and the love of materialism. These are general things which we've also discussed, which are signs, which truly they are. Well, um, from what we've seen in the world now, it's not... It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that this is happening. Correct. And then they quote Second Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 5, about the state of the world, that the love of many will grow cold, they will be unforgiving. And many Bible experts, however, reject all attempts to try and predict the date for the return of Jesus Christ. And then one of the pastors of Pepperell Christian Fellowship says such a stance is unethical to the promise that is the second coming of Christ. The Bible expert added, as claim after claim of the imminent return of Jesus has proven wrong over the last 2,000 years, Jesus' words have proven true. But we are still admonished in the word of God to watch yes. and to be watchmen and to discern the times. And there will be a final decree that will go out, the mark of the beast, and that that is the final sign. Have we seen that? Mm -hmm. Have we had the proof on the screen? Yes. I believe so. Here's another interesting one from January 25. Joe Biden Bible prophecy. God will use the U.S. president to usher in the tribulation. We don't have to read the whole thing. Of course, this is incorporating futurism from the Jesuit stable yes. into Christianity. The Great Tribulation, God's people will be raptured before that, and many see that Joe Biden is the one who's going to usher it in, and they're putting it under the category of conspiracy theories. None of this is going to happen. Now, I'm not saying... And I think you're not saying that it will definitely happen unto Joe Biden. No. But it could. It could. It could. It could. If these signs continue the way they are, it certainly could. Yes. So, Martin, when you study this book and you study prophecy, there is a true fulfillment of prophecy which you have to glean from the pages of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then there is this jumbled mixture to change the clear picture into a picture of mud. And this is why the critics can take hold of these yes. things and ridicule it. 
And that is why they can discredit the people that are saying something about an end-time event. It's because of this mingling of truth and error, and it makes a confusion. Confusion. Now, what does the word Babylon stand for? Confusion. Confusion. That's what we have. So when we talk about these issues, we must be very clear as to why we believe that we are living in the last days. Mm -hmm. We must look at the very distinct signs which the Bible is giving us, which will take place. Yes, there will be lovers of money. The people will be disobedient. Children will be disobedient to their parents. But you can take that out of virtually any generation Correct. in the past as well. The 60s were replete with that kind of behavior. Yes. You had the drug scene. You had the fall of morality. Those are all signs. Mm -hmm. But the final, final crux of the matter is to make null and void the authority of God. And whether we like it or not, that authority is linked to the Sabbath. That is where God has placed the seal of his authority, and that is why the Antichrist has placed the seal of his authority on the day that he has changed. That is the final choice. Who is the authority in your life? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are seeing the fulfillment of prophecy before our eyes. And I pray that God's people will wake up and see where this is heading. Help us to find our way through the maze, through the disinformation, through the ridicule, so that we can make our stand on the clear, thus says the Lord. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. To subscribe to our channel, click here. To get notifications, click on the bell. To watch the next video, click here. Thank you, and we'll see you again.